Hey there, my name is Chris Acton with Acting Creative and this is a handwoven experience. Episode 124. And in this episode, well, I'm going to build a bridge. You see, I love short format videos, but there are times that you need just a little more information to connect two topics together. So today's video is all about how to read a weaving draft for a table loom. It is going to connect episode 49 that is all about how to read a weaving draft and episode 73 that is all about direct tie-ups. And clearly I have to wear this shirt when I'm teaching how to read a draft. I don't know. It's this very strange quirk, but uh, you know, roll with me here. So let's start our conversation by talking about table looms. This is a table loom. Loom sits on a table. This is a four shaft table loom. These frames here are called shafts and each shaft then is connected to a lever. I have this lever here. Uh, when I pull it down, it's going to lift shaft number one. The next one over, shaft number two, then three, and then four. You get the idea. It is a one-to-one -one relationship. So one lever is in charge of one shaft. End of sentence, forever and ever, amen. It's a direct tie-up, right? Now, you'll notice if you watched episode 49, how to read a weaving pattern draft is that I did that from example of using my floor loom, which is a little different because it has multi tie ups, but we're not going to confuse things here today. We're talking about our table loom. So as we are working on our table loom, we need to know a couple key pieces of information to create a weaving pattern. We need to know the sequence that the yarns are going to be threaded through our shafts, right? We need to know which, warp yarn goes on which shaft to create the pattern. We need to know that the threading, that's what that's called. We need to know the threading. And then when we're ready to weave, we need to know which shafts need to be lifted and lowered as we throw our shuttle back and forth. That's called the treadling. Those are the two key pieces that we need to know to create our pattern, right? So let's pull out our pattern. Uh, this is from Ann Dixon's book. It's my favorite, the Hand Weavers Pattern Directory. It's not only pretty, but easy to use. Thank you, Ann. So, this is an example of a weaving draft, right? So let's briefly kind of touch on how to quote unquote read this. Uh, do you see this section right here? This, uh, not that part, <laughs> that part right there. Yes, this whole little kind of grid section here. This is where we find our sequence for the threading. That's how we can tell what goes where. And how you do that is that uh, see how I have four rows here? One, two, three, four, four rows. Each one of those represents one of my shafts. So the row at the bottom is shaft number one, this one right here, and then the one up one right there. Shaft, this is shaft number two. We lift up one, this is three, and this is four. So that tells me as I'm threading this pattern that I need to have one yarn on each shaft and repeat it over and over again. Okay, so that's that answers that question. That's how I know the sequencing or the threading for my project. Now, we also need to know which shafts to lift and lower as we're getting ready to throw our shuttle. We need to know the treadling. So for our table loom, here's how we do that. Uh, see this little section right here? Uh, this, these are our instructions for treadling. And this up here, it kind of looks like a crosser puzzle. This is our key. Think of like a map when you see a little a tree drawn and you look at the little key it says oh it's a forest got it that's what this is this is we're gonna refer back to this to help us distinguish which shafts we're gonna lift and lower here as we are weaving our fabric so Anne is very clear in her drafts about which direction to go which I love because I think it makes a lot of sense but uh, see her little red line here and she's got an arrow she's got a little curly cue for a repeat so she has you start your uh, treadling at the bottom, reading the pattern, and you're going this direction. So this is row number one right there. And then we go row number two and three and four. That's the direction we go. And then when we get to the top, we come back and we read it again. Okay. So here we're getting ready to go. We're, we're excited. Okay. So this is our very first row here. See our orange block. Now we need to know what that represents for us. Cause just an orange block randomly in our little grid does not help us. We need a key. So we are going to take our little eyeballs and we're going to follow this up to our key up here. Now, remember in, a moment ago, I mentioned how each of these rows represent a shaft. So I know that this 
little section here for our square is shafts one and three. So that's our first, it's called a pick, one and three. Take my uh, handy dandy shuttle and I'm gonna send it through like that, voila, one is done. So let's find out what's next. As we come back to our draft, we did this row, we're gonna move, our, move ourselves up. That is the next row. So where's our orange square? Right there. We'll look all the way up to the key says one and two. So that is our next pick. It's gonna be one and two. I'm gonna take my shuttle just like that. Do you see how that works? What I think is so wonderful about working on a table loom, AKA direct tie-up loom, is that you really get to know your pattern because every row you're looking at which shafts exactly are lifting and lowering to create your beautiful fabric. So hopefully that connects the dots for you. By the way, I wanna just make a little asterisk here for us is that uh, you can have a floor loom that is a direct tie-up loom as well. And you'll know because one treadle will connect to just one shaft and that's the way it's designed. There's no option to connect multiples. And that's totally fine. But for me, when I think of a direct tie-up loom, I think of a table loom because that is how they, 99% of the time, how they function. So I hope that helps. If you are working on a table loom, that you can now look at a draft and confidently know what goes where and how all the, all the things connect. Because uh, anything that you can do on a multi-tie-up loom, you can do on your table loom, of course. There's no, you're not at any kind of disadvantage there. All right, my friends, that was a lot of little dots to connect. And if you got confused in there anywhere, please drop me a line and I will, I'll, I'll, I'll help point you in the right direction for sure. I hope you have a wonderful week. Happy weaving.